Hello and welcome to Verbling. I am Teacher Oakley and uh, we are going to continue our little series this week practicing for the IELTS speaking test. Uh, I have compiled a lot of questions which have come up on recent on very recent uh, IELTS speaking tests as they were reported by test takers. So very recent topics that are currently in circulation. Uh, okay, uh, we're just gonna take turns answering the questions and I will give you feedback as it relates specifically to the IELTS exam and the IELTS scoring. Uh, today, we're kind of gonna concentrate a little bit more on the back end of the on the back end of the test uh, part two and part three that the test has three parts the first part is more or less a conversation you and the interviewer about very familiar topics things you like your preferences um, and basic descriptions part two is a long description we'll, we'll do a little bit of that today and also, I want to get into some of the part three questions, which are opinion-based questions, where you really need to concentrate on giving your opinion very clearly and supporting your response. Oh, Kiyoki, let me uh, do a um, um, mic check here and um, say hello to everybody. Uh, hi, Mikael. Welcome back. Okay. Hello. Hello again. Hi. Uh, hello, Yaroslav. How are you today? Hi, Oakley. I'm fine. How are you? Thank you. Thank you. Santiago is back in the game. Hey there, Santiago. Hello. Good morning. Okay. Hello, hello. Welcome. Uh, also, welcome back, Natasha. Hi, Natasha. Hello. Hello, Oakley. Hello, guys. It's good to see you. Good to see you again. And uh, hello, Sasha. Hi there. Hello, hello. hello again. And uh, uh, Ayara. Hello, teacher. Hi there. How are you? Great. Thank you. Okay. Super. All right. Uh, let me. Uh, let's get started here. Hang on a second. Okay. In uh, let's. Uh, first of all, before we get started. If anybody has any questions whatsoever about the IELTS test as a whole or the IELTS exam, uh, the IELTS speaking test in, in particular, anybody, anything, shoot. In fact, uh, anytime you have any questions during the course of the class, I am really not, I really don't mind being interrupted. I don't mind, you know, I, I, you know, ask questions, ask away, fire away. I, I'm all good with that. Okay, we're gonna start with. Uh, I'm gonna give you a cue card, uh, Mikael. You were the first one into class today, so the honor is yours, good sir. Thank I'm gonna you. have you take a look at this and give it a try. Now, remember, um, you you should be speaking for uh, two minutes, so. Uh, all right, this is the long turn. IELTS jargon, they call it the long turn. I personally prefer the description question because that's what it is. Uh, anyway, in the real exam, the uh, interlocutor will hand you a piece of paper and a pencil and uh, a cue card, often a card, maybe a piece of paper, whatever, depends on where you take the test with something on it that looks a little bit like this. It will have the key question here, talk about a situation when a child made you laugh, and a little uh, please say, and some bullet points. Three or four bullet points are normal. Who was the child? What did he or she do? When and where did it take place? Um, watch for these double questions, two for one. Uh, in fact, it is not entirely important that you really answer everything, uh, every bullet point. How it is and it isn't. Let me try to explain. Uh, one thing to note is the 
verb tenses in all the parts of the question. Made, was the child, what did he do, when and where did it take place. Clearly they're focused on past tense in this question. Um, your a situation. Always a good idea. Now this this is a good example. This really lends itself to telling a story. But basically in part two, always a good idea to tell a story, something that's familiar to you. It's easier to talk anyway. It's easier to talk about those things. You tend to have a more natural flow. And uh, you tend to add more detail. So, okay, there it is. Uh, I've tried to give you a minute, Mikael, to think. <laughs> but this, I, I don't understand very well. It's a, a situation that made me loathe. Um, mm -hmm. it, and I have to speak about the child. Yes, indeed. <laughs> when I, <laughs> it's not, but it's when not, I, this is not easy. So I have to imagine a situation, a real situation. Oh, no, a real situation, a situation okay. with a child. And no, you don't. Let me stop you right there. Um, okay. In the IELTS exam, no one is going to follow you home and fact check you and make sure all, everything you said is the truth. Yeah. Not going to happen. They just don't have the manpower. NSA is not working for IELTS. <laughs> uh, okay. No, you can lie your butt off, Mikhail. And in some cases, it may be a better idea. So, in other words, your brainstorming process here, if, you can, if it reminds you of a specific thing that happened to you, absolutely you should use that because you're familiar with it and it'll be easier for you. If you can't, the first thing I would brainstorm is, has this happened to me recently? No. How about when I was a child? and another child made me laugh. That would be acceptable. If I still can't think of anything, okay, where is, what is something I saw in TV or on the movies where I saw a child make everyone laugh? And I talk about that. That would be my kind of quick brainstorming path. Okay, so it doesn't have to be real to answer your question. Uh, okay. okay, Sasha, take care. Okay, so you can totally make it up if you want to. So, I have one idea on, on my head. <laughs> okay. It's something, that, it's something that happened some years ago. I used to work as an English teacher and I, it was a, it was one day that I have to, 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 to do some exams with my students and uh, it was a uh, in this situation. It was a uh, uh, oral exam. They, they they have to speak, and one of the students uh, came to the exam, and I think that it was something very strange because he, he has a very strange appearance. He has a very long beard, and he has a uh, some dark glasses, and. He sit in front of me. We we uh, started uh, speaking about the, the 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 topics that we had in the exam, and and I realized that he has a very strange strange voice, <laughs> and I couldn't imagine which which was this uh, the student, but uh, uh, we 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 follow doing the the the, the exam, and. <laughs> And some, and some, sometimes, sometimes I, I, I saw that her hair was quite strange too. That he, he, the, the hair moved in a strange way, and he had a very strange color. So all the situation was very strange. And when we, we, when we, uh, when we just finished the, the exam. He, he took off the glasses, the the, and I realized that was my son. Uh, he has a. <laughs> <laughs> he 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 came to the exam to, all, only to see that what was the the her fa her father's job. 
Uh, is that a true story? No. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty good, though. I, wow. I was, I, I was an uh, I was an uh, English uh, English t- uh, teacher. <laughs> okay. So it was it, 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 the first idea that I that came to my head. So I, I tried to, to to develop uh, this idea. Very creative. You had me going. You had me sold, man. I had to ask. Is that real? <laughs> I wasn't sure. See? Okay. It's, it's easy to lie. Anybody can do it. Absolutely. Uh, that was actually a very entertaining story. I was I let you go over time because I was I had to hear the end of the story, frankly. Um Okay. Uh let me introduce all of you to <clears throat> something I tell all my students for the part two question. Um, a, a nice, confident way that you can start off this question so that you don't have to worry about it. Many students fumble around with the first sentence. They don't know how to start. Maybe they hesitate and they say, okay, begin, and they don't start for 10 seconds because they don't know how they're supposed to begin. Let me kind of explain a way. Uh, and perfectly acceptable. Uh, in IELTS. I would like to tell you about or talk about um, okay and you can use that uh, for anything you can start with that if you know you're gonna start with that first clause in a sentence it really helps you get started off on the right foot it works for every part two question I have ever seen in my life and I have literally seen thousands uh, I would like to tell you about a very funny situation that happened to me about five years ago. For example, another way, another key here where you can, well, kill a few birds with one stone. I would like to tell you about the funniest, all right, pick an adjective and give the superlative. The funniest kid I have ever met. All right. Now imagine this sentence in an IELTS exam. I would, oh, you're using a modal. Uh, great. Use, they need you to move, use modals. To tell, oh, but that's an infinitive. Uh, you about the funniest. Oh, you've used a superlative kid I have ever met you're using a present perfect construction with an adverb you have just checked off five boxes on the IELTS scoring sheet and it's easy to do and you can plan before the exam that you're going to say this you're going to construct this type of sentence and it it kills a lot of birds with one stone <laughs> you're killing like five birds with one stone um, it works and you can print and again I, I've never seen a question it won't work for okay uh, again whether it's true or not we don't really care if this is the funniest kid you've ever met it does, who cares the idea is to show as many features of English speaking English language construction that you possibly can and you can plan it so you're not thinking on the fly. Another thing that you can, you need to think about the verb tenses of the question and make sure you're staying in the past tense. Mikhail did a very good job of that. Um, and you need to uh, also uh, think about words associated with the keywords. If you have any time left in your brainstorming, that is. Uh, okay, what are other words I might when I'm making notes, I might uh, write down some other words for child, child, kid, youth, young person. Doesn't have to be one word. It can be even better if it's co-locations. Little brat. I might write that down on my paper so that I could use all of these words and expressions. So I wouldn't be using the same word over and over again. Um, laugh. Okay, there's not really a lot of synonyms for laugh. Um, chuckle, uh, out, laugh out loud, uh, um, laughed uncontrollably, 
uncontrollably, I might think of a couple co-locations for laugh, and then begin, and then start speaking. That's about all the time you have in to prepare for this question. That's basically my strategy when I'm making notes. What's the verb tenses? I might even write that on my notes. I might write in big capital letters, past. So when I glance down, I know I have to be doing as many different past tenses as I can. <clears throat> I know my, think about some words, synonyms, and then think about that first sentence in the last, whatever, 15, 20 seconds, how I'm going to construct it so that I get the, the most for my money so I can start confidently. Uh, okay, uh, Mikhail. Uh, yes. Okay, it's the first thing that came on my head. Uh, the, uh, it's the only idea on my in my head it should be. Okay. Okay. Pronunciation, he had a long bird. <laughs> no, he didn't. Beard. Beer. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> like you drink beer at the bar. Just add a D, a beard. And yeah. when you, it's, it's okay, I, I think that it's, I said, uh, he took off the glasses, no, took off, no. Yeah, uh, that's good, that's yeah, correct. Yeah, that's great, yeah, that's yeah. correct. Take Re remove, no. No, remove to, the take off is better. And here's why it's better, it's a little bit idiomatic, it's a phrasal <laughs> verb, so that may, means it's a lot more abstract, it's better than a straight up uh, verb. If you can think of a verb, phrasal verb and you know it's correct, then a phrasal verb is always better. Okay. No, that was good. Actually, I had marked that down as a very good part of your dialogue, actually. Well, monologue. No, that was good. Um, okay, a little, got a little blurry. I couldn't imagine what was the, the, the student. I couldn't really understand what you said. Um, what was what? What was up with the student? What was going on with the student? Something like that would be great. Very colloquial language. Bordering on slangy, but that's okay. I also like that. One slip up with a possessive pronoun. You said her hair, and then you went back to he. So, a little slip up on the pronoun gender. Okay. Uh, Okay, only to see what were, only to see what was. Was, only to see what uh, was, yeah. was has to yes. match what. But that's it. Um, actually, your mistakes, all right, preposition, little mispronunciation, one kind of blurry in your fluency and cohesion area, pronoun, one subject verb agreement. These things are not huge. They do add up. But you did a lot of things right. You stayed in the right verb tense. You had good continuity. It was an engaging story. It really was. And it, it was very clear to understand the succession of events. So overall, I, I would definitely say that was quite good. Definitely in the sevens range. All right. Okay. That's, that's the idea. You want to... But at the beginning, I couldn't imagine. Uh, it, I couldn't imagine a, a good, uh, a good idea, or because it's not, it's not, it's quite. The 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 idea is quite close because you have to imagine uh, something speaking about a child and something mm. to 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 make you laugh. Uh, poof, it's not. It's not easy. It's the the the, the topic is so close. No? Yeah. Well, it's, it's a tough one. And again, this is a very, very recent topic. That's a topic from like a week ago, a test that was given in New Zealand, actually. But it uh, doesn't matter. The tests that they give out are dispersed from Cambridge, Oxford, New Zealand, Brazil, Mexico, Saudi Arabia. It doesn't matter. Everybody gets the same test questions. So we have the advantage here, the World Wide Web. We get, to, we get an, a glimpse of what questions might be on the exam. And I will say lately they have this tendency to talk about children as a topic a lot lately. Something that was never a topic in the last few months. I'm hearing that a lot. Okay, now normally, okay, part two uh, question. It, this doesn't always happen. 
it's supposed to happen, but I've had reports from my students that they change the topic from part two to part three. This is fairly recent as well. But uh, usually they follow the same topic and then ask opinion questions. So I'm going to do some part three questions, uh, starting with Yaroslav. Ready. Uh, okay. Okay, Yaroslav, what is the perfect age to become a parent? Uh, in my opinion, uh, the perfect age uh, to become a parent, it's about uh, 30 years old. Uh, the reason is why uh, I think uh, in the thirties people are uh, getting uh, a lot of uh, uh, money from their job. They already uh, done uh, a lot of uh, career uh, career achievements, and uh, I think uh, this is the best age uh, because uh, you already a grown person and you can uh, teach uh, your child uh, a lot of good things because uh, I think uh, in in your thirties you are already all around person and uh, as for example I can uh, give you uh, for example my a friend of mine that already have uh, two ch children at his thirties and he is really happy about it and also here a very wealth man and uh, I think it's uh, easier to grow uh, at children uh, at this age. Okay. Okay, overall that was very good. Now, uh, definitely I like to start, in my opinion, he very clearly stated his opinion with a signal phrase, in my opinion, blah, 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 blah. Be direct in your first sentence in part three. State your opinion clearly. Don't don't try to get too fancy, but use a, a transitional. From my point of view, in my perspective, the way I see it, in my opinion, that's good. Uh, then he start, tried to do the same thing. The reason is why. You got a little backwards there. The reason why is. You, okay. You switched your is and why. The reason why is blah, blah, blah. Okay. Um, okay. Again, the magic number two in IELTS. Try to give two reasons. And there's a reason for that. There's many reasons for that so that you can add more detail, but also so you can show how to introduce a second reason, which you really didn't do. You gave me one reason and in detail and an example and a kind of sidebar related information. But you didn't actually fully introduce another reason. A second reason might be, another important aspect is, something else we should take into account. Another thing I have to say, okay, these kind of long transitionals are IELTS gold. They love that. If you, if you don't use them at all, that's not good. If you use first, blah, 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 second, blah, 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 third, well, that's better than nothing. But if you can use good long ones, kind of redundant, well, another thing I have really have to say is that ones like that, that's good, better, okay? okay. So you, you did some. You could have, If you introduced a completely different, unique reason, idea, that would have been better, would have helped score. Um, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, verb choice. You, you, you have already done career achievements. You have already had. Um, yeah, we can't, we don't really use done. Um, well, of course, you could just use achieve, the verb. You've uh, already achieved a lot in your career. That would be easier, or you already have a lot of achievements. You have achievements. Okay. We don't say you do achievements. Oh, he did an achievement. Nah, 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 no. Uh, he, he had a great achievement. Yes, that's okay. Um, at his 30s. Should be in his 30s. Okay. All right, and then the last thing, uh, he's a wealth man. He's a wealthy man. Wealthy. Yeah, 
using the noun. It should be the adjective. But okay, all right. Not definitely not terrible. Good delivery. Good confident delivery. No hesitation or repetition or anything like that. Solid. Good solid answer. Um, probably, I don't know, six point five or so. I would say, at least, minimum. Uh, okay, um, Santiago. Let me ask you. Let's go to you now. I'm going to ask you kind of a related question. Santiago. You ready? Can you hear me, Obi? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Related. Talking about children and, and parents. What are the main qualities of a good parent? Main qualities. Okay. Uh, well, for me, uh, best qualities for, to be a good parent uh, could be. Um, to um, to be very polite with your uh, with your children to to teach them uh, how to how to um, how to to treat with with people to deal with people in a very polite way and to be really well, very educated with the rest of the people and to show them two uh, values of, of the life um, at the same time I think um, good parents uh, they have to to be very focused on on your um, education uh, children uh, to be uh, very involved in all the in all, in all their education and to to to, to check them um, sometimes about what they know how their education is going on or things like that to be really um, and worry about about their education, um, how they how they see life in general too. Okay. It could be for oh, okay. 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 All right. <laughs> one. Okay. One. Actually, I, I'm going to say it, one big mistake here. The, now, this is a kind of a trap question, so I kind of tricked you. However, I must say this is a very common question in um, in IELTS. It, sometimes it comes up in part two question, a actually. Uh, but anyway, uh, questions about the qualities of a person, personality, character traits, characteristics. They may say it in different ways. Very valuable and helpful to be prepared to with synonyms okay personality traits characteristics qualities you know if there's different ways you can say it that's helpful but okay here's the problem it's very tempting to do what you just did you just listed them uh, they have to they have to they have to uh, to teach them this to be involved in their education to you just gave a list Whatever the question is, this kind of question seems like they want a list. But whatever the question is, do not just give a list. A list can be used, but only as an example. Mm -hmm. Don't use that as your supporting reason. So again, although you started well, um, you gave your opinion and you introduced it with a, a signal phrase, you didn't then say, first of all, and the secret is to say, first of all, uh, a parent needs to teach their children to be polite. Just say it. Then say, why? Uh, I think there's way too many rude people in the world today, and I think it causes immense problems in communication and in all forms of 
social dialogue. Give a little detail. Uh, the second thing I think is of the utmost importance is that children need their parents to be very involved in their education. Okay, and then detail. Children who don't have a good education ha are at an extreme disadvantage in today's society. Give an example. For example, there are poor people in my city who don't, don't go to school and you see them out on the streets begging. I know this one kid, he's probably 28 years old. I've, see, I've seen him for the last 15 years begging on the street. Something like that. A okay, third so reason may be very organized. Mm -hmm. okay. So if I say something, uh, uh, it's good to explain why or for why reason uh, and to put some samples too, it could be great. Okay, okay, I got it. I got it, okay. okay. Thanks. Yeah. Kind of, you know, topic sentence or opinion, reason, detail, reason, detail, mm -hmm. reason, detail. Conclusion. You're done. Wonderful. Yeah, to be Fine. Really nice. Okay, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Uh, okay. Let's your speeches, okay, though. Um, they should know how their education is going on. Should be, you don't need on. They should know how their education is going. You know. Or going, or going well, could be. Just going. You don't okay. need on. You don't need anything. I, you know, for example, hi, Santiago, how's it going? Mm -hmm. I don't need on. Um, how is something going? You don't need on. Uh, okay, but really, uh, you didn't really have many other problems. It was just your organization, actually. Mm, yeah, but you know, it's, the problem. Well, you need to speak quickly, and uh, many, many words are, are coming to your mind at the same <laughs> time. It's, it's a bit yeah. difficult to organize everything. Yeah, very important but to, uh, I'll tell you something. If you get in the habit of organizing your speech, it has an added benefit. As it becomes a habit, if it be, as it becomes habitual, uh, all right, you, well, another thing that I should probably say, I'm saying it automatically without thinking. So the whole time I'm saying another thing I should probably say, I'm actually thinking of the reason. I haven't even thought of it yet or okay. the detail. So you can use it as a kind of a hesitation device, okay? okay All right, Miguel, you. Miguel's gone to catch your bus. All right, bye bye. Uh, okay, so once you, it becomes habitual and really, really, really natural, then it become then it becomes automatic, and you don't have to think about it, and you can actually use that time to brainstorm other other stuff. Uh, okay, let's, uh, Natasha, your turn, okay, I'm gonna, Natasha, I'm okay. gonna have you do, yeah. an, I'm gonna have you do another part two question, okay? Okay, okay. Another cue card question, all right, so I'm gonna screen okay. share this with you, it's not a hard one, don't, don't be nervous, all right, mm -hmm. here it is, talk about a sport event that you watched live. Please say what sport was it? What did you watch? When, oh sorry, when did you watch it? Why did you remember it? Why did you remember it? That's wrong. This should be why do you remember it? Okay. Okay. Do you need okay. a minute? Uh, no, no. I, I think that I can uh, start now. Okay. Terrific. Okay. Right. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, I would uh, like to say you about um, uh, soccer on grass. I um, I like this sport uh, because um, I don't know. Maybe um, it's uh, very important for our country and uh, a lot of uh, people, especially children, uh, involved in it. Um, I watch this uh, program uh, on last. Um, uh, in last uh, um, week, uh, because uh, um, in uh, those uh, <coughs> uh, time, there uh, were competition uh, between our um, 
uh, children teams uh, and uh, uh, teams from uh, Netherlands. <clears throat> I remember it uh, very well because in our uh, team uh, was uh, played uh, my uh, nephew. Uh, she like uh, uh, she liked to do it, uh, uh, and uh, she involved in this uh, sport um, a, a lot of time ago. Uh, maybe she. Uh, she uh, has uh, been uh, uh, doing it uh, for eight uh, uh, years. Uh, <clears throat> uh, I like um, those programs uh, because uh, the, uh, our uh, team was one, and uh, she and uh, it. Um, mm, uh, uh, be become a third uh, place in this uh, competition. Uh, they played uh, very, very well, um, and it was a very interesting uh, program uh, uh, because um, it was a difficult uh, game between uh, these. Um, uh, teams, uh, they are uh, very strong, uh, and uh, 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 when the play only started, uh, we c uh, we couldn't uh, know who will uh, won uh, in this uh, in this case in this situation. Uh, this one was uh, very important for our teams uh, because after that they uh, can uh, can start a competition uh, with uh, another country in uh, Europe. Open and uh, they started. Uh, uh, they um, uh, they prepared uh, to eat uh, nowadays. Uh, so we uh, we all uh, hope that uh, they uh, future games uh, will be so uh, so good so well how uh, the uh, how they last uh, play. Okay. Woo! Crammed yeah. a lot of information in there, Natasha. All right, Thank first you. of all, calm down. Mellow out. <laughs> oh, it's right. my problem. I'm very nervous. You sound like it's an emergency, like it's a 911 call. Okay, we've got an emergency <laughs> children's soccer match. You've got to get down here right away. These children are playing the Netherlands. Ah. Calm down. All right. Okay, I'm just kidding with you, but okay, slow down your pacing. Here's a piece of advice okay. for you, Natasha, and for I'll everyone, try. for mm -hmm. others in the class and for anybody watching. Look, we all get nervous. It's natural. It's human. I, I can confirm Natasha is a human being. Yay. Okay. <laughs> we all do. I do. But look, um... When you're giving, it doesn't matter if you're doing a, a, an English exam or a, a job interview or giving a presentation at work. You're going to be a little nervous. When you're nervous, you tend to get keyed up. The adrenaline, it's physiological, purely physical. Uh, you tend to speak faster. It, it happens. Your, your motions are faster, more jerky, and you speak faster. Um, okay. It's natural and it's human. So, a couple things. If, when you guys are in the IELTS exam, do not sit on your hands, sit up straight. Do what you do naturally. If you wave your arms around when you talk, well then wave your arms mm -hmm. around. If you roll your eyes in a gesture of disgust, then roll your eyes. Use your normal body language you would use talking to your best friend. Do, do what feels natural. This will help relax you and help your pace. Also, mm -hmm. be aware that this is true and try to conscientiously slow down your pace just a little bit. And usually, really, what inevitably happens, you feel like you're slowing it down, but you're so full of adrenaline, in reality, you're talking normally. <laughs> you know, you're, okay. you're putting the brakes on at the same time you're putting the accelerator on so you come to a more normal pacing all right okay, okay. now uh, some specifics uh, I want to say you should be I want to tell you okay mm -hmm. all right we can't use a pronoun after say you say to someone all right mm -hmm. You, uh, you tell someone a story, so it would have to be tell. 
in this case. Mm -hmm. Okay, children involved in it. Children are involved in it. Yes, um, I see. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> Which would have been a, a great chance to create a passive verb tense there. Which they do want to hear at some point in the test. They want you to prove that you can do a passive. Uh, okay, our all right. Our, our children teams. It should be our children's team. Oh yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, on my team played our nephew. And then okay. Okay, on my team? Okay, on our team? I don't know. It's your country's team, right? Mm -hmm. um, our nephew played on our team. Okay? You want to okay. have the subject noun first. Who did it? The okay. nephew. What they do? Played. Um, okay, played what? Played football uh, on our team. Okay, prepositional phrase. Generally, prepositional phrases go last. And then after that, right after you said nephew, you said she. <laughs> you, you meant he, right? Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nephew's a boy, right. Okay. Our team was one. Our team won. You don't need... That's an active sentence. Okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. So the, the action... The team did the action. The team won. All right. Uh, we couldn't know who will won. Okay, you're using will with the past tense. Can't ever do that. Who will win? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Be careful of those. Mostly verb tense problems, really. Yes. yes. Okay. But, uh, all right, you know, uh, we definitely told the story. I understood the story. Uh, okay. Um, not... Horrible, but you got to slow down that pacing because uh, fluency and coherence is uh, definitely, well, it's 25% of your score. Um, again, um, you're, the scoring, fluency and coherence, fluency means your delivery. Do you have a lot of, do you have a lot of, do you have a lot of repetition or mm -hmm. long pauses, um, as well as cohesion how organized you are that's 25 percent that's why I keep begging you guys to use transitions first of all another reason is for example however on the other hand you've got to use these because that's okay a big chunk of your score um, vocabulary 25 percent of your score don't use the same word over and again over and over and over again use synonyms topic related preferably to get a top score, eight or nine, you've got to use some phrasal verbs and or idioms. Not a lot of them, but a okay. couple. Two, three, okay. four during the course of the, two to four during the course of the entire interview. Um, okay, and another good thing to do is show that you know how to use, actually it helps vocabulary and sentence structure, if you can say he's, oh, my father's a politician. He got involved in politics a long uh, time ago. He's always running across the country politicking. You use different forms of a verb, of a one word. That's that's good too. That counts as like a different word. And you have to change your sentence structure. So those are that's another good thing. So okay, vocabulary, sentence structure, mm -hmm. grammar. That's twenty five percent. The most important thing is they want to hear you use verb tenses, a range of verb tenses, and mm -hmm. um, and uh, a mix of simple sentences, compound, and complex sentences. That's okay. it. Which, if you're using subordinators, first of all, uh, another important point is, guess what? You do that automatically. You don't have to think yeah. about it. So you're killing two birds with one stone. Plus, you're using additional vocabulary. Plus, you're actually um, you you tend to use when you use signal phrases. You tend to use a pitch changes in intonation. So, the fourth thing, twenty five percent pronunciation, which includes intonation and syllable stress. 
Okay. What's your fine on that? Okay. Anyway, uh, that was directed toward everyone, Natasha, not just you, actually. Uh, okay. Um, Got to get Ken and uh, Ayara into the ball game here, so to speak. Okay. So, uh, Ayara, uh, yeah. Uh, Ayara, let's go to a part three question, which is opinion. Again, following mm -hmm. through with the topic about sports. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Okay. Ooh, ooh, ooh. All right. Ayara, is, uh, is, it, is it the natural ability or training and experience that brings out the best in a, in an in a sportsman athlete. <laughs> uh, can you repeat the question? Is it it, uh, yes. Is it, uh, this is, actually, this is a disguised preference question, which is a typical part three question. Mm -hmm. Is it is it the natural ability, mm -hmm. or is it the training and experience that brings out the best in an athlete? Okay. Uh, well, in my opinion, I would say uh, obvious is I mean is a com combination of both. But I, I would say seventy percent is training, and the thirty percent is natural ability. Why? Because I think if somebody, many people, uh, born with a, a, a talent, but when you de when you are not a, a genius, you can develop your techniques. You can study a lot, so you can apply yourself to get better, to get better. And I think this is I think uh, the the train is essential. It's, it's crucial to become a great athlete. Okay. <laughs> hmm. Okay. A little different organization. Okay. Now, okay, it's very tempting on these preference questions to um, to take a middle of the road approach. Well, actually, both are important because it's obviously true. And by the way, uh, Ayara, obviously, not obvious. Mm -hmm. uh, you can say it's obvious, or you can say obviously. Mm -hmm. But you just said obvious. Okay. Um, all right. It's very tempting, especially. Okay, this case. Well, uh, you know, I agree with you. Obviously, it's a mix of both things. Um, nature versus nurture. Uh, okay, education and your genetic. Obviously, it is. But here's the thing: in the IELTS, um, in IELTS. Uh, it's risk versus a reward. It's harder to do a comparative analysis and give an opinion. It's much harder, frankly, than it is to just give an a pick one and give an opinion. So it's riskier to say, oh, both are important, and then mm -hmm. go back and forth and compare the two. If you're going to do that, you really have to do a comparative analysis, an academic style essay, but speaking. Okay, on one hand, uh, natural ability plays a part because if you're not tall, you can't play basketball, for example. Or but on the other hand, even the tallest man in the world can't shoot a free throw. Look at Shaq, for example, <laughs> um, without training and experience. And you have to go back and, and you have to make at least a couple points, so then you have to go back and forth. And you have to be able to use you know, the signal phrases on one hand, on the other hand, contrarily, uh, however, but, and go back and forth. It's a little more difficult. It's technically difficult. But it's risk versus reward. If you pull it off, then you're going to get a higher score. It's a lot easier, if you're not confident, to just pick one mm -hmm. and, and go with that. Please remember, it doesn't have to be the truth. It doesn't have to be. You just need reasons. You don't need good reasons. You don't. They don't. It, it does not affect your score if your reasons to support your opinion are completely stupid. It, it really doesn't matter. It's not about your content. It's about your speaking. 
Okay. Uh, I mean, you gave good reasons. You are being um, almost too logical, and you're answering the question. Don't concern yourself with answering the question as much as with structuring. I, you did an interesting thing, though, I have to say. I have to comment. She gave her topic sentence, and then she said, why? A rhetorical question. All right, that's pretty cool, actually. Um, it's pretty cool to do maybe once in the exam. Definitely, you don't want to find yourself doing that for every question because you would definitely lose lose a lot of ground. Doing it once may gain you a little. Again, the whole test is about a variety of skills. So don't do the same thing over and over again. you got to do different things. Use different words. Use different signal phrases, blah, blah, blah. But overall, you know, uh, AR, that was actually pretty good. Oh, thank you. Did I? All right. So you did say 70-30. Um, you could have given me a little de detail or examples, you know. Mm -hmm. when, when I, I mentioned basketball, mm -hmm. right? where it's very obvious, ba natural, physical development very clearly has something to do with the sport. So that's a pretty good choice, mm -hmm. you know. Um, okay, but overall... Very solid. I don't know. That's, that was an answer I would have to, if I was scoring you, honestly, I would have to listen to the recording over and over again to try to figure out what your score was. That was a hard one to score, but, Frank. <laughs> give him one. What's that? Can you give me just an opinion score? about the score? La, 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 la. <laughs> I don't know. Um, you could have been anywhere between a 6 and a 7.5 on that. I'm not sure. At least a 6. I think. Okay. Okay. No, Where because I've you? already I've already had the, the, the IELTS exam. Yeah. How did you do? I, I got a six point five in the speaking. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Pretty Here much got. about what I would have guessed. <laughs> okay. Um okay. That's great. Are you gonna take the exam again or are you are you No, uh, no, okay. I've got you're good. I, I passed the exam. Yeah. Is that what you need? That's Thanks, cool. God. Well, yeah. yeah, thank God. Yeah, I hear you. Congratulations. In, in thank case. you. All right. Uh, okay. Uh, Ken. All right. Got just enough time to fit you in here, Ken. Yeah. All right. All right, Ken. Should athletes help people in need? Okay. Can I uh, six seconds preparation? Can I get No. <laughs> no. In IELTS, no. There's no preparation time. Really? And, and if you have a long, if you have a long pause when you first start, you're certainly going to lose points. There's almost nothing that costs you more points than long pauses. That's a killer. Okay. Could you repeat the question again? Sure. Now there's a way to hesitate. Uh, no points off for that. Should athletes help people in need? Yes, I think a, a, a athlete has a responsibility, somewhat responsibility to help people need. You know, uh, they are, they were chosen uh, people actually. Uh, not so many people uh, became a, a top athlete, so they uh, stand on a special position. So sometimes uh, society requires them as a role model, or some top athletes gain a huge amount of money, so they. Uh, uh, they uh, donate their money to the social welfare or kind of charity. And I think it's also a requirement from the society. So in that way, athletes, uh, and you know, many kids uh, dreamed about them actually. So, uh, so encourage uh, people. That's uh, maybe, I think it's one of the most uh, biggest requirement from the supporters or society or people to athletes. Uh, that's it. Okay. <laughs> I think it was good. <laughs> uh, uh, you're, you're, you speak very fast. It's very hard to score you. You're going so fast. You could definitely slow down. Specifically, Ken, uh, something – your English is very good, but something that you uh, – honestly, you've, you've been in many of my classes. I don't know if I've ever said this to you before, but when you have – 
groups of content words, two, three, four content words in a in a row, your pace is very fast. You speak quite quickly. It's okay when you have a nice mix of function words and content words. It's perfectly understandable. But when you, I just kind of really realize this when I'm trying to score you. When you have a lot of content words in a row, you're, it's a special position, special position, special position. Slow down your speech when you have two or three multi-syllable words in a row. You got to mm -hmm. slow it down. Multi-syllable multi words are always content words and they're important words. So you need to kind of slow down a little. It, it runs into, it ends up being seven syllables in a row. Get da, 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 da. Whoa. And I, my brain can't keep up. Maybe it's my brain that's faulty, but you could definitely slow down, particularly when you get to those gigantic words. <laughs> See how I slow down there a little for those big words. Did you say athletes were chosen people? Mm, yeah, maybe it was chosen. Yeah, I could say, yeah. I, I, I don't remember. Okay, yeah. well, that's a little weird. <laughs> the chosen, chosen ones. By the chosen ones. <laughs> Okay, yeah. this is a co-location we usually use for, uh, you know, religious. <laughs> we are the chosen ones. So it's a little strange talking about athletes. So how can I rephrase that? Selected or something? Uh, well, yeah, okay. They're, <coughs> excuse me, they're rather unique people. They're, uh, it's an exclusive group. Uh, professional athletes is a rather exclusive group. Mm -hmm. uh, not that many people, and then, which is exactly what you said, not that many people mm -hmm. get to be professional athletes. Mm -hmm. That's what I would say, for example. Mm -hmm. Kids dreamed about them should be present tense. Kids mm -hmm. dream about them. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, and once again, nothing new here. I am uh, late getting to my next class, so over time again. Thank you, everyone. We're out of time.